We were talking about Abraham the other day. Another prophet that we could learn a lot from is Moses. God was close to Moses and he spoke to him directly. Interesting. The Bible also says something similar. The Taurat says, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. The Bible records the story about God coming down to earth to speak to Moses. Does the Quran have a similar story? Yes it does. The Quran says that one day Moses saw a fire and when he approached it, he heard a voice saying, O oh Moses, verily I am Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The Torah tells us that Moses approached the burning bush, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. God came down from heaven to speak to Moses? What was it about Moses that helped him to gain favor from God? Like Abraham, Moses also worshipped only one God. In the Torah, Moses taught, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. God spoke to his people through the prophets in the past. Today, God continues to speak to his people primarily through his word. Do we spend enough time reading and meditating on God's word in the Torah, Zabaran and Jill? Yes, besides the Quran, Muslims are also required to believe in the Torah, Zabaran and Jill. The Quran says, anyone who denies Allah, his angels, his books, in the plural, his messengers, and the day of judgment, has gone far, far astray. God gave us his word through the prophets, which were handed down to us in the form of a book. Is this the only way God's word is revealed to us? Can God's word also be in the form of a person? God's word in a person? Yes, another prophet born after Moses was called the word of God. Moses was called honorable in this world, but someone who came after him was called honorable in this world as well as in the world to come. Who is this person? Let's talk about this another day. Just like Abraham, Moses also sacrificed much to obey God. God asked Moses to confront Pharaoh to let the Jews leave Egypt. Moses obeyed at the risk of losing his life. Jesus also taught us the price of following God is high. Jesus said in the Angel, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Moses risked his life in obeying God. But God helped him. The Quran tells us, to Moses we did give nine clear signs. The purpose of these supernatural signs was to prove to Pharaoh that God was with the Jews and that he should let the Jews go. The Bible also talked about these nine signs and also a tenth sign that killed the firstborn of all Egypt. But God loved the Jews and had a solution for them to escape death. Just as the animal became a ransom and died in place of Abraham's son, the same principle of substitutionary death saved the Israelites. What died as ransom so that the firstborn of the Jews need not have to die? The firstborn in the family would not die if that family sacrificed an unblemished animal and put the blood of the animal at their door frame. Later on, Moses taught the people about the importance of animal sacrifices in taking away our sins and saving our souls from death. The Quran also speaks about offering animal sacrifices to God when you are unable to fulfill certain requirements of the high. Muslims believe that after they perform the high, they become sinless again. The prominent Muslim scholar Imam Ghazali teaches, sacrifice on a mass scale brings people near God. Hope that in lieu of every limb of the sacrificed animal, God will save your every limb from hellfire. Are mere animals valuable enough to act as a substitute for mankind or are they simply symbolical or some greater sacrifice, what the Quran calls a great or feet sacrifice? That's interesting. Let's discuss this another day.